Welcome to the Liberati Mansion. Welcome to Under the Vegas Sun, looking at the people, the events, and the news surrounding Las Vegas and the entire Vegas Valley. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. We are live from the Liberace Mansion. There's a situation now ongoing in America, including here in Las Vegas, that a lot of people don't want to talk about. It involves young people. More and more young people are now homeless in America. What can be done? What should we all know? How do we change that? On our program today, you'll meet a man who's very much involved in that entire effort, and some of the things that he knows and does could be important for all of us. You'll meet him in just a moment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Eamon Springall of Stitched at the Cosmopolitan, and you're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. The stories are very unique. The stories are not sometimes very good. The facts are, the statistics are, even worse. Here's the facts. Each year in America, some 1.7 million teenagers go homeless. 1.7 million. It is now estimated that one out of five young people, at least once in their lifetime, will be a runaway. Not good statistics. How do we deal with it? Our very special guest on the program today is a man who is dealing exactly with that. Finding ways to better respond to it, to, to change the situation. He's all part of a great organization that is doing just that. Our very special guest on the program is a man who, uh, how can I say it, who cares so much about young people that he's put his entire life to it. Uh, his name is Ryan Wolfington. Welcome to our program. Sir. How are you doing? Thanks I, for I having appreciate me. that. The situation about young people is something that I think most of us either don't understand, don't know, or don't want to truly face. It's a situation, though, that is getting statistically worse and worse every year. Has society changed that much? Have things gotten so dramatically different that the numbers like 1.7 million teens being homeless every year has now become a reality? I mean, I used to say that there's always been struggles and that that's part of the human condition and that it's probably always been difficult to be a teenager and to grow up in society no matter what era. But when you add video games and you add social media and the accessibility to, you know, really hardcore pornography at a, for a, a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old, it has gotten exponentially worse. And one stat that blows my mind is teen suicide is, is up 70% since 2006. That's a big number. So I'd say it's as bad as it's ever been. The Inspiring Children Foundation, which you are the founder of and president of, is really dedicated to, to try and change the paradigm that is out there involving young people. But the facts are, as you has mentioned, that the situations that young people are facing today are different than they were when I was a child, mm -hmm. when I was a teenager far different than they were when I was a teenager, and far different even when you were a teenager. Mm -hmm. They are situationally more at risk, mm -hmm. I believe, definitely, than it was when you were a teen and when I were a teen. Significant. Significantly. I mean, just look at an example. So my uncle uh, went to Notre Dame, great college. He got in a lot of trouble because he got into his dorm at 11 o'clock at night for the third time. And his father took him out. I don't know if he got kicked out or his father took him out. Now, nowadays, you'd be lucky if a kid is even near his dorm by even get in to even go to bed before midnight or two in the morning. And that's just the, that's the highest level of youth, college environment. Um, when I was young, you would be able to, you know, like same with you, is go outside and, and experience nature and to play sports and do things without being supervised all the time. Nowadays, Children almost never have that opportunity. If they are on the streets or outside, then it's usually getting them involved in drugs or, um, you know, 
a lot of inappropriate behavior. Ryan, there's a situation that I believe has occurred, and, and please, for the audience, I hope that you don't, are not offended by this, but I believe it's the reality. We have desensitized young people today. Mm -hmm. I believe that as much good as social media and the internet does, it has broken down what I believe is the key part of life that is so critical, and that's the ability to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. When I sit in a restaurant and I watch families, and they're all on their device, not talking to each other, but on their device, mm -hmm. if I see young people who believe what they see on that device, the gaming especially, uh, that is so violent that it becomes a part and parcel of who they are, I think as a society, we desensitize young people especially. It's different if you're 40 years old and you're understanding that what you see in the game is a game. Mm -hmm. But when you're a, a teen or even younger, pre-teens, and you see that, it becomes very impactful upon you. I mean, I said 10 years ago that video games are worse than drugs. I have more issues with video games than I do with marijuana, than I do with cocaine. Really? Yes. Video games are so addictive, and and mind you, you know if you if you apples to apples, a child doing cocaine and a child doing video games is not going to be the same. But when you're talking about the effects on society, I have more problems with children being addicted to video games, not going to bed at night, getting into states of depression and anxiety, and not wanting to engage life in any meaningful way because the world of video games is so exciting that everything else is a buzzkill. Everything else is a bore. And I'm a complete, I'm very passionate about psychology and what does it take to have peace of mind and happiness. And the elements are fundamentally a calm mind, a clear mind. Nowadays, when you and I grew up, you go outside, you engage in nature, you play sports. There's so many things that help you calm your mind. You'd fall asleep in the back seat of your car because you know, you're on your way home. Nowadays, there's nothing. You're constantly bombarded with interaction to the point where the mind never calms down. And when that happens, you reach a critical stage of anxiety and depression, which are at all time high right now. Listen, I, I was, and I think the audience knows by now, I was born in the projects of Newark, New Jersey. Uh, my family didn't have, I didn't have anything. Uh, I had a father who, uh, who did not love me the way I think most parents do. Uh, I suffered because of that. But the times were different, mm -hmm. and your response was different. Today, the response is entirely different. What made you create this foundation when there are so many things that, I mean, your family is a very well-known family. There are a lot of things you could have done in life. Why create this foundation? Why involve uh, people that, that I've known a great period of time, a great tennis, uh, a man by the name of uh, Marty Hennessy, uh, the Bryan brothers, an incredible lady by the name of Jewel, a wonderful uh, performer. Why do that rather than go out and make your million someplace? Well, um, I, I've had the pleasure of working with Jewel and doing some great things with her. And, um, and then my mentor was a, taught me so many great things about business and he's very successful. I think his net worth is around $7 billion. But at one point uh, early in my career, when I was president of a casino company, I was checking all the boxes. I did really well in school. I did really well in business. I, w I had everything I thought I ever wanted. And I just, I knew that there was something deeper and more meaningful to capture out in life. And I didn't know what it was, but I knew I wanted to find it. So I took a year off. Um, this, I'd, I really spent a lot of time trying to master business. I'm like, I want to master happiness. I want to master my own weaknesses because like you I had a dad that we had a great relationship but there were a lot of challenges and I, I really didn't want to end up doing some of the things that that I saw a lot of adults do and I didn't want to end up unhappy so I, I just took a year off and it was in Vegas um, Vegas changed my life that's why I love it so much and I, I realized that the real currency in life isn't money it's peace of mind it's love, it's joy, and it's meaningful connections and making a significant difference. And it really happened by accident, but uh, it started fixing my own mess. I was a bit of a mess. I was a workaholic. Um, I loved 
work, but it took over my life. And I had to fix my own deficiencies, which I don't think were anything majorly bad, but everyone has them. And I, I We all have deficiencies. Well, I, was, I mean, what, there's a lot of things in my life I would like to have done better or done differently, but it's the way you deal with them. And I don't know if young people today, unless they're involved with what you're doing, have that ability to change, have the, have the belief in who they are. I, here, I do a lot of speeches around the country, a lot of speeches around the world to, to businesses and to organizations about what it takes to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I honestly believe the key part of that is who you are mm -hmm. and what you are. It's this passion that you have. But that comes from believing in who you are. If you're a homeless youth who's, who's been out in the street, who's struggling, I don't know if they have people around them to help them build that back up again, have it not been for your organization. Well, you know, that was the aha moment for me. When I took the time to figure out what happiness was, and I was a 26, 27-year-old, successful, highly educated person, I started running into concepts and ideas like, why the heck didn't they teach me this in high school? Why didn't they teach me how to deal with my emotions? Why didn't they teach me how to let go of anger, how to, how to make amends, how to be honest? how to have fundamental core values. This wasn't taught to me in the best prep schools in the country. So I was like, this is kind of a travesty. We need to teach young people, not just math and science, but the art of happiness, the art of success. Because if you interview successful people, they will always talk about five, 10, 15 different pillars or principles. It's the, it's the philosophy of life. Correct. And, and, and I'm gonna take a break for a couple of seconds. When I come back, I wanna to talk to you about this wonderful thing that you help create inside young people mm -hmm. to help build that philosophy of life, to help change their own personal environment to make them better and whole again. Correct. So we'll talk about that in just a couple of seconds. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Mark Chinook from Monday's Dark, and you are watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. How do you change the destiny of a young person? young person facing some issues, some problems, some challenges. And again, the key is challenges more than anything. And the great thing about a challenge is you can either become a victim or a victor. I believe if you do the right things, you can become the victor. Once again, our very, very special guest, uh, Wyatt Wilpington, uh, the founder and president of a great organization um, called the Inspiring Children Foundation. Welcome back to our program. Statistically, as I had mentioned earlier, there's a lot of homeless in America of teens. But there's a lot of teens that are facing equal problems because they have come from an economically challenged background. Now, um, I know a lot of people use the term at risk. And I'll be honest with you. I hate the term. Mm -hmm. Me too. I hate the term because any time that I think that you put a label on somebody, you have a tendency to break them down because they're not at risk of being successful. They're at risk of not making it. Mm -hmm. So my term that I use, and I've used it for a great number of years, is that promise. Mm -hmm. It's whether or not we as a society meet the promise that I think we should be making to young people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of young people are facing economic problems as well as homelessness. How do you change that paradigm? How do you create the development? Is it through this philosophy of life that you put forward? Is it about changing not only what's here, but what's here? Mm -hmm. I believe this is as important as this. Definitely. But that's just me. Definitely. Tell me. Well, well, first is we tell them what you just said, which is there's no such thing as at risk. If anything, give me the kid like you grew up, low income, hungry, gritty. That is the makings of greatness. So one, as I say, look, the makings of great adversity dealt with properly is how greatness happens. So they're not at risk. They're actually more advantaged. I would say in society, the biggest risk are really entitled kids that are, that are overly spoiled. There are more of issues there that in my opinion give me those kids will be a harder thing to solve um second is we give them a psychology for life 
I mean, we have found that there is a literally a mathematical psychology that if you do one, two, and three, it equals, you know, four. Um, and if they do those steps, they can not only become successful, but they can be happy. Because success is, isn't that hard. It's happiness, happiness that's the most important piece. It is. Because if you are happy, if, if you're happy, if you are, are comfortable with who you are in your Correct. own skin, Correct. there's very few things that you cannot become victorious on. Correct. If you're unhappy, if you're not happy with your skin, I think it becomes even, even harder. Now, you've affiliated yourself with some amazing people. As I said, uh, Jewel, who is, uh, uh, how can I say, Jewel, Jewel is, uh, is indeed just what her name is. She mm -hmm. is a true Jewel. But he, she is somebody that, as a young woman, was homeless, on her own, created this amazing young woman that she is today. You have other people that you're involved in. I talked about Marty Hennessy. Uh, Marty Hennessy, who was... Uh, the teaching pro at the Desert Inn Hotel in Las Vegas for a great number of years, has an, this amazing philosophy of life. And he used to talk to young people uh, when I was with him on the court about who they were and what they were. Mm -hmm. and then you have the Bryan brothers who are amazing on, on their own. How did you become affiliated with so many tremendous people? And how did they decide what they want to do is help these young people? Well, we have a philosophy that we tell our kids that if you, if you get up each day and you calm your mind, and then you follow what you know intrinsically to be right, not only are you gonna feel right, but magic happens. And it happens not just in getting them scholarships to college, but doors open because people wanna be around happy and good-natured people. And that has become true for our organization as a whole. I mean, we literally started with nothing. I was the first donor, my family carried it for a long time, and just by doing good work and working hard and being humble, um, people noticed it. And they didn't notice it because of me, they noticed it because the children were walking a living example of excellence and kindness and, and just shimmered. And the children help actually become part of the working model of what your foundation's all about. It's not, they're not just named, they're part of it. They help create it. Well, ironically, they run the whole thing. So at first, it, when I look back growing up, w why I was entrepreneurially successful at a young age, it was because of my aunts and uncles. They always put me to work the, within five minutes of being in the house. Uh, they believed in me. They empowered me to do things that were way above my pay grade. And my mentor, you know, at 26, I was president of a gaming company. So he believed in giving me big opportunities, but I had to earn it. I came at the bottom floor, I did the grittiest job. So we tried to recreate that by saying, look, if you're gonna get help from our foundation, you're gonna earn it. What I loved about um, Frank Fertitta uh, and the Fertitta family is that both uh, Frank III and Lorenzo did the same exact thing. His, their dad believed that you start at the bottom, yep. you learn the business, and you go from there. I kind of feel as though you're doing the same thing with these young people. You're, you're creating with them their own intrinsic power Correct. to become who and what they want to be. Correct. And when you do that, they build confidence because they didn't get a handout. They're given an opportunity to do for themselves. And we're here to create self-reliant, self-motivated human beings, not dependent human beings. And um, our biggest honor in our program is to clean the bathroom. Because if you can learn to clean the bathroom with the greatest attitude and the best effort, then you can do anything with an extraordinary mindset. And I learned that myself. I used to pick up dog crap cutting lawns. And, and I tell the kids, if I can do that, you can do that. And, um, and then they earn the right to do the, the bigger project and the bigger project. And in the end, you become an intern in our, in our foundation. You run the whole organization. Our kids run the organization. Have you found, through working with the young people, that once they begin their progress to move back up again in life, that it becomes their own never-ending story. That the more they get, the more they want, and it continues to grow as long as they have this inside. If we give them the internal mechanism to find love and happiness and joy and self-motivation, it starts with gratitude. Like if you're deeply grateful for your life, you wanna get up every day and give it your best shot. And once you get rid of the anger and the negativity and the worry and the fear, 
they just have this gratitude and they can't help but want to do their best every day. Because we're not here to build like, you know, we want to build the CEOs and the leaders of tomorrow, not just help a kid get out of an impoverished situation. This organization that you've put together, the uh, Inspiring Children Foundation, it is, I sense a driving force within you. Um, I, I wear a pin every single day. Um, it's a starfish. And it follows the, the starfish story, which I'm sure you... I love the starfish story. So for those who don't know the starfish story, it's all about a, a gentleman who is uh, walking on the beach in, uh, on, the, on the East Coast after a storm. And all of these starfish have been washed up on the beach. And he sees in the, in the, uh, down the beach uh, uh, a young woman who appears to be uh, throwing rocks into the water. And, uh, and, and the gentleman says to himself, gee, I remember when I did that as a kid, that was a wonderful thing. As he gets closer, he believes what he sees is this young woman skipping rocks across the waves. Said to himself again how wonderful it is uh, that I used to do that when I was a kid. And he notices as he's going down the beach, more and more and more there are thousands upon thousands of starfish that have been washed up because of the storm. And he finally gets to the young woman and he notices that she was actually taking starfish off of the beach and putting it back into the water. And the gentleman says to the young woman, he said, uh, uh, listen, th th there are thousands upon thousands of starfish. You can't, you can't make a difference. You can't change these starfish lives. And the young woman looks immediately dejected. She puts her head down. She thinks for a moment. And she reaches down and she picks up another starfish and throws it in the water. And she says, I made a difference to that one. We all have every single day an opportunity in our lives to make a difference in someone else's life. Isn't that what you're doing? And it's exponential. So what's neat about our program, we have 110 kids in college, Stanford, Harvard, Oxford, Yale, Princeton. Most importantly, we have their professionals in life. They're happy. And they come back every summer break, every uh, college break, and they help out. Not because we ask them to, because they can't help, but because they love to do it. So not only are we helping them, but we're helping them to find the joy in giving and helping others. And they're not just helping with money or, or a gesture or thank you. They actually have a psychology where they can counsel and mentor people in their schools, people in their families to become happy. Could you do me a favor? Sure. Can you stay with us for a second program and maybe bring a young person on the program with you that's been through this? I would love to talk to them about what they've been through and how this has made a change and a difference in their lives. Could you do that for me? Definitely. Okay. We're, we're going to do that. Uh, uh, again, you know, we're, we're all, I think, just the starfish on the beach. We're waiting for somebody to make a difference in our lives. And I think what you're going to find out, I think, in our next program, when you hear from a young person, how much of a difference people can make. We'll have some closing words in just a moment. Stay with us. Hey, it's Mark Chinook from Monday's Dark, and you are watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Well, I think as you just heard, next week on our program, you'll meet a young man who has gone through being homeless, has gone through all the troubles, the trials and tribulations of being homeless, and he's come out on top. But what was his life like? How has he changed? And what is the advice for all of us? You'll meet him next week, right here on our program. Until then, I'm Steve Shore. Be safe and enjoy life under the Vegas sun.